Hey, Foot Clan, we're excited. The UDK is available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com, and today's show is jam-packed. We're doing some keep trade cut. Don't miss it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, June 2nd, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, back with you. Another day, another episode, another fine day. A great day. The UDK is out. You yes. can go check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Been a lot of fun seeing people's comments on social media, their feedback. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for picking it up, checking it out. You're going to love it. And if you don't have it, you can go get it at ultimatedraftkit.com. A lot of improvements this year. A lot of stuff we're really excited to show and share with you. And a lot of improvements that are coming. The draft analyzer in particular will be out on July 1st. That will let you import your team and We'll evaluate it. We'll tell you where your strengths and weaknesses are, things to focus on heading into the 2022 season. You know, it's useful after your draft, obviously. You put in the roster that you got, and we give you some feedback, and just another part of it. What else is going on? How are you doing, Jason? Well, I'm doing great now that the UDK is out. I can breathe and sleep again. It's, that's not a black shirt you're wearing either. No, but it oh. is a pickleball shirt, and that's what's important. Okay. Pickle is life. Yes. That's like a, like a Heather Navy shirt. So, good on you. If you say so. Nice job. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Mikey? Fantastic. Thanks for asking. Yeah, the volume was a little jarring there. Brooks, you doing well? Fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> All some. right. Twitter at the FF Ballers. The community's joined the foot.com. Here's the quick question of today's show. How much do you factor strength to schedule into your rankings? We've all been through every team, every player. And this is actually one of the most frequently asked questions in general. It's one of the areas of the UDK that people look at a lot. We break down, you know, in the UDK, we break it down by full season, uh, strength of schedule by position. So you can see, you know, which quarterback, or, or I should say, you know, which team has a difficult schedule for a quarterback, for a running back, for a wide receiver. We break it down by early season end of season, how much do you factor it into what you're doing, Jason? Yeah, as far as into the rankings, I don't. I mean, it's factored in in the extremes. If you know that someone has just a brutal or a very soft schedule, you might tweak your numbers a little bit. But for the most part, it's not so much in the ranking process um, that the strength of schedule is used. It's kind of afterwards when, when you've got kind of what you believe is going to happen this season – in kind of a generic vacuum, and then you look at the strength of schedule. So the way, you know, one of the ways that I use it, like as a drafter, when I'm using uh, the tool in my drafts, is for early season defenses. You have to draft a defense. I will never, ever, ever, ever think about grabbing a defense that I think is so good. I'm just going to hold on to them the whole year. I hope I get a defense I can hold on to the whole year, but that's that's not my strategy. I'm going to be streaming. I'm going to be playing matchups. Matchups are more important, and so that's where it, you know you go to the strength of schedule. You go, well, who's got a great for the defense schedule to start the season? That's who I want to draft. The Browns popped out at me like crazy on that. The Browns, uh, if you are unfamiliar, they start against the Panthers, followed up with the Jets. Okay. Then the Steelers. Okay. Without Big Ben, and let's go Falcons to finish the first month of the season. That's pretty nice. They I'm, might give up a touchdown in that run. <laughs> yeah, I think the Steelers can get one. Yeah, it, and inversely, you might be in on somebody like the Chargers as a defense this year. You know, they add Khalil Mack to that crew. They play week one against Buffalo. Right. So, you you know, you might like them, but what are you going to do? You're going to roster two defenses to start your season, not even knowing if they're going to be great? That kind of takes a team like the Chargers off your draft board because, like Jason said, I mean, there are presumptions made with strengths of schedule. I mean, you don't know which of these. There's massive turnover every year in defensive, um, you know, talent, ability, 
output. Some teams you know pretty definitively are going to be pretty good. Yes, the Jets. But, you know, a lot of it is is still guesswork, so the worst thing to do would be to, you know, overemphasize that, take a defense that you're not even sure about. I like that early season schedule, looking at that, just to give me a small guide of how a player might start. Yeah, I mean, that's that's where I'm looking at it for the most. And defensive, that's, that's a great tip. And also uh, looking at the quarterback position, who's going to get off to uh, what what could be a hotter start. And, you know, I mean, in the draft, you you got to factor in the value of the ADP of a quarterback, their upside, and a guy that, you know, I, that, that we like a lot. I know Jason and I really like him is Jalen Hurts from the Eagles. And his opening schedule is – Mm. outrageous it's uh at detroit minnesota at washington jacksonville and then i believe they follow that up with uh the arizona cardinals who their secondary is like they've had a really rough off season there in arizona and then so like but in hurts is a guy you're gonna who will be drafted you know rounds uh six six through eight or so he'll go but then you're looking at if you are playing a, a late round quarterback situation and trying to get someone with, with upside. And you think maybe Trevor Lawrence has a shot of becoming something this year. And he really opens up. He has a, a decent opening schedule as well. And, and it's it, maybe he streams well, maybe he doesn't, and then you can just move on. But you know, like Jared Goff opens up with a, with an okay schedule as well. So like it's really the early season that you're looking at because don't start looking at the fantasy playoffs just yet. Don't don't cash that check in the draft season or in week one or week two. We will get to that throughout the season. Yeah, and alternatively, same thing that Andy talked about for my defense works in the reverse too. Tua is a very promising streaming option this year when you add Tyree Kill to the mix, and you might be tempted to grab him as you know your late round uh, quarterback to start. But you know th their their season does not start very easily with the uh, the Patriots, the Ravens, the Bills like you're you know you got some tough defenses there to open up the season if you're looking to stream. Yeah. Yeah, so point of correction though. I made a mistake, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo plays the Rams, not the Chargers. The Los Week Angeles one. Rams, not the Los Angeles Chargers. Correct. Okay. 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 So then everything I said about the Chargers just apply to the Rams if you like the Rams defense. It Which was is well actually said. yeah, no, I mean that that is an interesting uh, tidbit in and of itself because the Rams are one of the highest drafted defenses. Right. It, they're great. Assuming that Aaron Donald will be back, you expect them to be one of the best defenses. They'll be drafted in the top five of your draft. Maybe let someone else grab them because week one you might get off to an L playing against Josh Allen. One tiny bit of news but worth bringing up since we brought him up before. Rashad Penny back at – Seahawks OTAs. Okay. For, for now. For now. For now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. He's only got like one two two possible states. Injured, not injured. He's currently in the not injured state. He's got a pretty big gradient of injury of not injured to kind of mostly severely. He can do it all. I'm a little shocked at you both. Because we love Rashad Penny, the yeah, talent. Yeah, yeah. It just, I just didn't think you'd be in on all this offseason, kind of like disparaging him for injury history. I thought you'd be more optimistic, more excited. Look, I just drafted him in one of my eliminators. I am optimistic for the talent. I don't think the team is great, and his injury history just kind of, you know, it's... It's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of years it of it. It speaks for itself. Yeah. I'm okay. not saying he's injury decide. prone. You know. I'm just saying he's been injured a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, today's main event, we're going to do some Keep Trade Cut. Keep Trade Cut. All right. Let's start with the category of post-hype running backs. Keep Trade Cut, Clyde Edwards-Alaire of the Kansas City Chiefs, Miles Sanders of the Philadelphia Eagles, and Travis Etienne, who we never got to see last year, of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Who allegedly is looking you know closer to his uh his former state in the OTA. Which would be the uninjured. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like his recovery the the beat reporters are saying that he looks like he's back and has his his cuts and his bursts and stuff. I look I'll, I'll weigh in. Right Please. now these these three running backs 
pretty close in average draft position in best ball leagues right now. Etienne's going higher, actually, at RB20, Clyde at 26, Miles Sanders at 27. Uh, I have seen a lot of aggressive opinions about how much Philadelphia may or may not pass because of the investment into A.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. Regardless, I think, you know, balance is the key and the goal, and I think Miles Sanders is the best running back of this group. From it, just on the ground, best runner by far is Miles Sanders. He's who I will keep in this situation, and I will trade Clyde on the everlasting promise of Clyde edwards Lair. <laughs> Not to say, again, he can't be a heavy contributor in the passing game, but just think about what we said about Darrell Williams last year, or, I mean, this, this past couple shows ago. Darrell Williams was a top 10 total pass catcher in terms of receptions. He had the 12th most targets. 12th position. most targets. That's what it was. So heavily involved in the passing game, over 1,000 yards combined, uh, rushing, receiving. It's very possible that the Darrell Williams season is the Clyde season or something right. similar to it. So you can still be a heavily involved, important part of the offense and not necessarily deliver on the everlasting promise, like I said. So I'll trade him on that, and then I guess I'm going to cut Travis Etienne. I don't have anything for or against him. It's it's just uh, the unknown versus a little bit more known. Well, I will hop in then because he would be my keep of the three. Travis Etienne is someone I'm rising on. Um, when you say Miles Sanders is is the clear cut best runner, you know the best running back. I don't know that that's actually true. We forget. I did not say Ranier. Ranier. Mm -hmm. Um, I you know I, we forget Travis Etienne was a very very high. He was a first round draft pick. Sure. Miles Sanders wasn't like Travis Etienne was supposed to be great. The only reason that he you know obviously he he missed his rookie season, but prior to the injury, the only reason there was already some cold water being thrown on Travis Etienne was because he was drafted to the Jags that already had James Robinson, and now you didn't know what was going on. Right now, James Robinson's not there. Travis Etienne is healthy. He's working with his college quarterback, um, he, where he was a great pass catcher. I think he's going to be a PPR machine in this offense. I think he is actually the most talented if healthy, and that's the question mark is – is he back to his, you know, pre-injury self? But he is um, rising up my rankings. Uh, literally today, prior to this question, um, I moved him up and James Robinson down a smidge. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little tough giving him credit for being a first-round pick, late first round. Yeah, Clyde when, edwards alaire was a first-round pick, the Jason. I'm just saying. Not as high. When the situation <laughs> was... We ridiculed the pick for months and months and months. Like we, well, they, that was that wasn't ETN. Yeah. That was the Jags taking a running back when they had so many holes and had a running back. So he would, I mean, he would have had to go twenty six through thirty one to stay in that first round. I don't have any problem with you picking him. I mean, I think it's, your logic makes sense. Uh, you know, you had an issue with David Montgomery due to circumstance and situation on the offense that still exists exists in Jacksonville, but. He has a skill set that is passing game and running game, so definitely don't mind that. Maybe more upside. We've seen Miles for a couple of years. Yeah, I think I my keep is Miles Sanders. I mean, he's been steadily moving up my rankings as well. Uh, just I mean, he is a good player. Of I think Andy's right. Of like you can't compare a player who's taken zero NFL snaps to a seasoned veteran who's at like running for over five a carry. Miles Sanders is a great running back. Where this surprises me is his the pass catching upside of these three running backs is not to Miles Sanders. Like it's Clyde Edwards Alaire with Kansas City in the second most vacated targets. He should see a massive uptick uptick. Travis Etienne, part of the the debate for Travis Etienne's true value is because Urban Meyer, number one, who's gone, but when Urban Meyer drafted him last year in the first he immediately came out and said he'll be a, a scat back for us. And it's like, what? Why? You're spending a first-round NFL draft pick on a th on a pass-catching running back? That's insanity. But he has that in his skill set, and I don't think that James Robinson is back anytime soon with that end-of-season Achilles injury, unfortunately. But Miles Jason's not afraid of Snoop Connor. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. is correct. The depth chart is not scary. And it's like looking at – the the entire portrait of the Eagles season, it's it's interesting because Miles Sanders was 
on the field a ton, a ton to start the year, but was not getting the ball because they were really they were being a very very pass heavy aggressive offense, and then they eventually switched to being the the run based offense. But Miles got hurt, and then once Miles was back from this from his injury, he was actually still playing a lower amount of the snaps, maybe still recovering, but yet super effective in in the work that he was actually getting and you're talking 16 for 94 nine carries for 64 yards 24 carries for 120 yards and like, yet tied with brooks for rushing touchdowns yeah but just my when he came back from injury in that six games or uh, the five game stint the dude was running for over six yards a carry and it just came down to rushing touchdowns if if miles sanders had put up that season with Four rushing touchdowns last year. He would not be available where he is going currently in drafts. And I I really, really like him. And can Jalen Hurts repeat that amount of rushing touchdowns? It's possible. But it's, also, but it's also possible that Miles Sanders cannibalizes you know 50% of them. All three are very risky. Do any of sure. them have top 15 upside? Like which ones would I you think Miles put does. into that bucket? Yeah, I mean, I I think all three do, but Etienne and Miles Sanders to me, I would I I would prefer them both over Clyde. And which ones do not have their gallbladder again? Clyde. Clyde doesn't. Yeah, mm. that's oh, gone. All right. Mm. Bladderless. Uh, the next. Well, he key. still has a bladder. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. just the gall right. version of the bladder that it's he's like missing. a it's a variant. That's exactly right, Mike. A variant bladder. That's yes, correct. Mm. We're doing good. It's got a lot of gall. Tier three tight ends. Tier three tight ends, what am I talking about? Um, the rankings inside the Ultimate Draft Kit, we break them into tiers. We're ranking, or we're keep trade cutting, TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz. Mike, I know you're famous <sighs> for drafting Zach Ertz in lots of drafts recently. Um, yeah. I. He's the keep for me. He is. He's easily the keep. I hate it so, so, so much. Because I don't think that he, at this point of his career, he is not a dynamic player. I don't know that at any point of his career he was ever truly can dynamic. I, can I set this up? I know exactly what the situation is yeah, for you. Yeah, okay, cool. All right? Yeah. We we joke all the time that some restaurant out there someday is going to sponsor this show, and they're going to give us a gold card. <laughs> all right? And that gold card is yeah. free food at yeah. that restaurant. Now, there are restaurants out there that maybe you would not choose to pay money at. Sure. But. If you we were won't handed, name any names. If you were handed a gold card, right? Where are you eating? Oh, I'm eating there three times a week. <laughs> to me, that is your Zachary <laughs> situation. You've been you're 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 sitting there and you oh. open your wallet and the gold card's in there and you're like, dude, I don't want to eat there, but it's free. <laughs> yeah, like I don't have to pay for it. Zach Ertz, like with over 19 percent target share last year. Zach Ertz through the first six weeks is going to see what seven plus targets a game while DeAndre Hopkins is suspended it's not going to be the entire season but Kyler Murray is being drafted as a top five fantasy wide receiver right now quarterback and, er, yeah quarterback <laughs> and somehow Hopkins is still the first Arizona skill position player who is or a pass catcher that is being drafted and he won't play for six weeks and as much as we like the the potential of Rondale Moore, who was a second round pick, just athleticism oozing out all of his pores, we can't count on him. They traded for Hollywood Brown. Yeah, he's got rapport with with uh, with Kyler from college, but that's not the pros, and that's not in Cliff's system. We know that Zach Ertz works with Kyler Murray, and I hate it so very much that he's gonna he's gonna be an absolute PPR machine for six weeks. And it's disgusting. Uh, the quote from Kyle was, who have you become, Mike? Yes, yes, I Your know. past self would slap you. Yeah, I, I know. I think you're, you're – But he's the keep for me, your too. Your current self maybe should I, – I won't stand for this TJ Hawkins and slander. I, will, I refuse to stand for it. Now, real You're quick, sitting, though. Exactly. <laughs> I refuse to stand. I will, I will not. Um, TJ Hawkinson, when he went down to injury, was the tight end three. That's coming off of being the tight end four. Now, was he consistent? No. Who is? You got Kelsey, you Zach got Ertz Andrews. Will be. <laughs> you got Kelsey, you got Andrews. No, Zach Ertz will have as many disappearing games as Hawkins has done. Starting week seven. Hawkinson is actually <laughs> Hawkinson is actually talented. 
He is okay. We're ba- we're back in okay. agreement. We're, we're exactly. on the same team now. Who who do you think can break a tackle? Oh, T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah, not Zach Ertz. <laughs> um, I, I will pay you so much to make <laughs> Zach Ertz your my guy. Oh man, that would be I, I would, awesome. I mean, you look. We do the my guys every year, and let's be honest. Those first five six weeks are the ones that right? they make the biggest mark. Yeah. The audience is the biggest. If they have a good six weeks, Mike, you could be in glory. Has ever, has ever been? You can do it. Has anyone ever been like, a, this is my third, my my one third guy? Where you pivot from Ertz for the back half of the year? Yeah, I was saying like. Well, you got to have your you got to have your two thirds my guy then. You got to have your week okay. seven through the rest there, of the year. Yeah. So my to guy complete. is. And I think they have to be the same position. I think that's, oh, for the, sure. that's the law. For sure. So anyways, Hawkinson, I believe, is actually very, very good. I don't think that the um, incoming talent on offense is bad for Hawkinson. Hawkinson was double teamed after the uh, going into week three. It was like, oh, they've just got Hawkinson who's been dominating the first two weeks. Let's just roll all coverage to him because there's no one else to worry about. Hawkinson is great. That being said, Hawkinson right now is still in the fifth round. There are great wide receivers. Ertz is in the ninth round. Mm-hmm. So if we're factoring in draft costs, I don't know. This question didn't bring that in. If it's if it's not factoring it, it in, it's up to you. Hawkinson. Well, then Hawkinson is my keep. I'll trade Ertz to you guys and and, and cut mm. Goddard. You're not getting much in now. That is trade. There, no. <laughs> does it disturb you on like a deep emotional level that like Zach Ertz averaged more yards per catch than T.J. Hawkinson did last year? Does that bother you on a like an athleticism level? It doesn't bother me on an athleticism level because I remember the wide open play that Zach Ertz was able to run for like 60 yards and pad those stats. But um, I will I will say <laughs> Why this. didn't Hawkinson have any of those plays to bat his Because the whole defense was on him. Oh, man. But I will say this. Fantasy football is so fun. <laughs> From week seven on, which is when Zach Ertz was an Arizona Cardinal, he was the tight end four. So this isn't homerism, you know, that people are, oh, he's picking Zach. Zach Ertz was a tight end four. He's got no Hopkins to start the year. He's in the ninth round. If we're factoring that in, he has to be the keep here. I feel, Goddard though is clearly the last man out here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's just kind of wild. Again, these are all tier three tight ends in the ultimate draft kit. You're not going. To, you're going to get higher ceiling games from Hawkinson, I think, than you will Zach Hurts. I under I believe the PPR thing in the beginning of the year. Look, it hurts me. I, I have a dynasty team that has Dawson Knox and Zach Hurts, and I've got Hurts sitting in there for the first part of the year because that's yeah. who I'm playing. Um, all right, let's take a quick break, and we'll we'll come back to some more Keep Trade Cut. Let's talk about some second-round studs. Keep Trade Cut. CeeDee Lamb oh, man. of the Dallas Cowboys. Travis Kelsey, Kansas City Chief and Champion. DeAndre Swift of the Detroit Lions. Oh, so man, cross this... cross positional keep trade cut. I love this as being the follow up question because Jason <laughs> I Moore, know, I know. Jason Moore, alleged fantasy expert, alleged. Oh my god, is about to keep two Detroit Lions in a row. Uh so that I, is, I that is partially correct. De- <laughs> De- DeAndre Swift is my. <laughs> Clear key I told here. you. Yes. Wait, why is, that is how true. is that partially it's correct? It's partially true because in an actual draft, I said when ADP matters, I'm not drafting Hawkinson in the fifth. I was taking him. I would prefer him. If they all cost a dollar and it's an auction draft, boom, I'll take Hawkinson. But okay. I would bypass Hawkinson in the fifth. Now you're the carry-on guy, right? Oh, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> I am gone. See you guys later. Enjoy your two-man oh, show. Oh, man. Land. Um, no, but I, look. Cry, cry some more. Um, look, DeAndre Swift has not broken out yet in the sense that he hasn't been in the top 15 either of his seasons. He's dealt with injuries, but he has broken out in the sense that he was phenomenal. Yes, um, true. You, you have very few people who can catch the ball like DeAndre Swift. Um, Andy, I remind you that you preferred Swift over Jonathan Taylor pre-draft because of the pass catching ability. That's how good Swift was at that. And you know, if you look at last year, he was the running back seven up until his injury, which was—I mean, he was—he's a hundred catch receiver over the first eight games. That's what he was doing. So yeah, he, that was his pace. That was that was his pace for the whole season. Would have been a hundred receptions on one hundred and twenty targets. 
it's very quick to get a floor when you catch that many passes. That was the superpower. But again, I think the bigger discussion on Detroit is how broad is that target distribution? Amon Ra didn't break out till the second half. Jamison Williams was drafted. Uh, and they brought in Chark, right? Yes. Yes, they brought in DJ Chark, and they, they obviously, you know, they have another back that is capable enough. So it's a, it's a question more of like, do you believe this offense is going to function through the main vessels of last year, Swift, Hawkinson, um, or do you believe that that last year breakout of Amon Ra earned him a higher target share, and will Jamison Williams be heavily involved? Josh Reynolds was a late season addition. You've also got, like you said, uh, DJ Chark. So that's the philosophical debate on upside for some of these players. Yeah, for for me with Swift, I I think that the talent will win out. It's not that Amon Ross St. Brown won't be involved or that Jamison Williams won't be he heavily involved. He, you know, he's probably going to get off to a slower start and doesn't project to be a high volume player. But I think in, in the end, the talent of DeAndre Swift is someone you've got to get the ball in the hands of. It's easy to get the ball in the hands of DeAndre Swift, and yeah. he's a good runner. So I don't think it all has to come through the air. If he loses a couple of targets, but the offense is better and the touchdown opportunities go up. So that's that's why he's my keep. When he, I'm at that one. He's my keep, too, by the way. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go with the running back. I'm going to take the running back here at a position – that is difficult to find uh, solid contributors with upside. And when you can catch the ball the way that Swift does, look, if he gets hurt this year again, if he gets banged up again, we're going to be entering a different territory with DeAndre Swift. We're going to be walking the, the, the road of Antonio Gibson soon, where, where that, that McCaffrey-esque dreamy upside is going to fade away because of durability. And Miles Sanders in many parts yeah, lost yeah, the exact absolutely. same thing. It's, just, it's the same story where – Look, if you're not durable, it don't matter. So I'm gonna still go with the running back. So I agree with Jason there. Um, I would I would probably trade Kelsey, and then I will. I guess I have to cut CD wow. Lamb, who I love. That but, would be the completion of my keep trade cut yeah, as well. Yeah. I I also wanted to say, Andy, I I figured it out. Uh, in approximately two weeks or so, we will be performing live. Yes, to a, a in Motown. A sold out crowd in Detroit. Yeah. The king no of spoilers the, here. I'm just saying the king of pandering. Oh my god. He gosh. is already setting the stage for the people of Detroit to I, to to bathe him in praise. Love me. <laughs> I love me, Detroit. I completely forgot that you did this in Chicago once. Yes. And I didn't even put two and two together. Mm. And now I know because of course I should know. <laughs> I I'm mean, just, I, I believe the people of Detroit are, they can see through this <laughs> mirage. <laughs> I think they see through clear lenses into the talent of DeAndre Swift. You know, now that I think about it, I think Matthew Stafford might be a really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm being, I'm being a weenie here, guys. I'm taking, I'm going Travis Kelsey. He's going safe. Yeah. I think that all, all, all three of these guys, fantastic, but. Travis Kelsey with Tyreek Hill out of town. I know that Stafford's on the Rams, Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit still loves Did you think Matthew that was a Stafford. mistake? <laughs> yeah, I did. They make commercials with Matthew Stafford yeah. alluding to the fact that he loves his old city. It was a joke, Brooks. I, I, I do believe we can get at <laughs> Thank least... Thank you for keeping me fact-checking me, though. Thank one, you. We can get one more year of dominance out of Travis Kelsey and truly be a positional advantage. And, like... CeeDee Lamb, CeeDee Lamb terrifies me because I think that he can be a truly elite. He's the wide receiver six right now in best ball. I think he can hit that, pay off his draft capital, even exceed it. He has a great quarterback with Dak, but I think there is also a chance that CeeDee Lamb is just, he's fine, and he's a wide receiver one, but you drafted like the wide receiver 12 at the wide receiver now, six. Now, we spent some time last season – on some really important matters that matter in, in fantasy football, which mm. is like the breakfast club, right? Like the, mm. the Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford. Uh, yes, yes. They have breakfast together. Cooper Cup of Coffee. Yeah, and, and, and you know, A plus B equals MVP. So I don't know if you knew, but like Dak Prescott got CeeDee Lamb. He moved the locker. He moved the locker. Oh, they I got, have not heard. They've got neighboring yes. lockers now. Whoa. Yeah. 
So they're best, getting changed really close together. Best friends. I mean, they may be sharing clothes. I don't even know. How did you not hit the breaking news button for such right? Because it's not breaking anymore. Well, yeah, now, a couple yeah, weeks I mean, you ago. can't say it. He just said it already. You can't, you can't drop it now. I'm going Travis Kelsey. Uh, I will trade CeeDee Lamb as a... The, the fantasy community, very hot and bothered for And him. you're cutting Swift. I will cut Swift. The fantasy hitman, Mike yeah. Wright. Yep. Detroit, listen up. Yep. <laughs> Detroit, remember that he is cutting DeAndre Swift, says he's no good. Says the Lions stink. I even rank higher than Andy. Oh, <laughs> oh it's on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just got thrown under. <laughs> I think we may, we may well. experience a different crowd in Detroit due to the um, – I don't know, generation of playoff-less Detroit fans. They may not be quite as protective of their players as we'll yeah. as the uh, the Philly fans we'll were. We'll see. <laughs> All right, here's another one. Year two quarterbacks, as in your quarterback two in Superflex League. So okay. let's, let's keep that context there. Mac Jones, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields. No, so man. I... It's crazy because I'm I'm sitting here and I had a quick answer. And then I'm looking at best ball ADP and I'm going, is it the wrong answer? Because my guy was going to be the last one in best ball ADP right now. If I'm looking at a quarterback two in super flex, Mac Jones feels super safe. But he also provides maybe very limited upside. I, I'm excited about Devontae Parker. I'm excited about year two evolution of Mac Jones who looked great as a rookie. But... Mac Jones can look great and score fewer fantasy points than Justin Fields looking mediocre. Yes. And that part scares me. The same may be said of Trevor Lawrence. Um, so this is tough. I guess I will keep Justin Fields. And I Whoa, will. Oh, yeah, baby. And, and I guess Woo! just because of the. Let's check the computer. Oh, gosh. Yep. Little wins, Mike. Uh, Justin Fields, I'll keep. I, I'll trade Mac Jones. I'll cut Trevor Lawrence. I. I've. Ugh. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, Good. I, for, I, no, I, I'll, I'll jump in here because the keep is Justin Fields for me as well, especially as your your quarterback too. I want some upside. I just i I don't see a world where Mac Jones is like a, anywhere close to a top twelve quarterback. That that's not who the Patriots are. Maybe Mac Jones turns into you know the the high flying Tom Brady years. I I, I well that seems like a I do not see that happening. Let, uh, let me break something down for you just because okay. I was curious. Okay. From week seven on, Mac Jones had a fantasy finish of nine. He had a five, a seven, a nine, and a seven. Those were his yes. good weeks. So he had five good weeks over that last, what was that, 11 games played. Yes. And, I, then, and then he finished pretty bad in a number of weeks, 27, 29, 30, 26. So the, the numbers, so Justin Fields played nine full games, and I get it, that's kind of, Cherry picking uh, out his when he was thrust in for injury, and then the game he got injured because I think that with Justin Fields' frame and the way he plays football, injury is certainly a risk. But Fields played in nine full games, and in four of them he was a top ten quarterback. Yes, QB ten in three of those, but QB five in one of them as well. So four of his nine full games. Meanwhile, Trevor Lawrence eighteen games, four games as a top twelve guy. Mac Jones eighteen games. And he had five as a top 10 quarterback. Justin Fields, last year, we had three quarterbacks, three true starting quarterbacks with an average depth of target of over 10 yards. That'd be Russ Wilson, Lamar Jackson, and Justin Fields. But he shouldn't have. What do you mean, but he shouldn't have? He just shouldn't have done that. Well, I, mean, he, I, I, I don't know. care what he well, should have or could have done. You should, though, because the average depth of target metric to me is like, it, it somewhat betrays the situation. It's very hard to evaluate first year quarterbacks anyways but like just because he throws the ball down the field doesn't mean that's what he should have been doing he's going to end up on the bench i well i, I don't think he's going to end up on the bench personally the but the, the fact that he's willing to rip it downfield and has darnell mooney who matches up perfect with that that's big plays and then his first three full starts he averaged eight rushing yards justin fields in three starts eight rushing yards per game after that, and that's when the fantasy production started to come, he was averaging 50-plus rushing yards uh, after those three first garbage starts. So there's the ceiling is still there for Justin Fields. High risk. If you want to go with Trevor Lawrence here, I'm okay with that because his, look, Trevor Lawrence is not throwing a 2% touchdown rate. That's 
that's ridiculously low. He will bounce back from that. But Mac Jones to me is the easy uh, cut just because I don't see a world where he's truly a valuable difference making fantasy. It's quarterback. funny because he's the best quarterback. Like he is, but without I don't, a doubt, I the don't best. play in the NFL. Sure, I play fantasy. But a lot of I times, see him making a leap. A lot of times, great quarterbacks who don't run the ball, they get completely overlooked for fantasy. Christian or uh, 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 Captain Kirk, you know, he's he's someone that nobody ever wants. But he's great. Stafford's not really running the ball anymore. He's 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 very good. Now I get it. If you want to swing for the fences, Justin Fields is the answer because of the rushing. But the last thing I want to say is on Trevor Lawrence, because I Trevor Lawrence is someone who looked so darn bad yeah. that it's really hard for me to see him taking that leap to being a great quarterback when you are that bad you're talking the lowest touchdown rate ever for a rookie quarterback that started at least 12 games like he was not middle of the pack he didn't have any flashes of like oh my gosh look at him and he had so many flashes that were like oh my gosh look at that that's just gnarly and bad but he was dealing with urban meyer who sure is uh, the worst of the worst and when i look at the targets of who he was throwing the ball to last year. So you had Marvin Jones, number one target. Okay, he's at this stage in his career, still a, still a fine enough target. Not great, but then it went to LaVisca Chenault, who mm -hmm. had the worst season ever. Now maybe that's Trevor Lawrence's fault. Like his third highest target with only 50 targets was Laquan Treadwell. Oh, yeah. What that, was it, like five catches a week? Yeah, I mean, 51 total targets. Dan Arnold, uh, Jamal Agnew, like these are, I mean... He did not have anybody to throw the ball to. So now you get a new head coach. You bring in new weapons. You got Evan Ingram. You've got Christian Kirk. You've got um, Zay Jones, who is better than Zay Laquan Treadwell. Um, so there is a world where he takes that step forward, but I'll I'll take Justin Fields here. Yeah, I mean, the, you did add weapons for Mac Jones and for sure. Trevor Lawrence. You did not really add weapons for Justin Fields. Agreed. 68% um, completion percentage for Mac Jones which was the second best ever as a rookie, 59% for Fields. It is a tough situation to debate these because all three players, like they were rookies. You know, like your your analysis of Justin Fields was like, he didn't run in the beginning, he ran at the end. Mac Jones was better at the end than he was in the beginning. How far do they go and how good will they be? Now, Jason, you took Justin Fields. What was your trade? What was your cut? Uh, my trade would be Mac Jones. My cut would be Trevor Lawrence. I'm trying to build him up in my mind to where there is an outlook that is rosy, but I, I don't actually believe he's going to be a great quarterback. Um, I hope I am wrong. And then with Mac Jones, uh, I will I will trade him away on the hope of his talent and the fears that he will have a Baker Mayfield esque progression to his pocket passing uh, ventures. All right, it's Underdog Fantasy Time. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right, we are doing a weekly segment with our friends from Underdog Fantasy, giving you some best ball tips. And for those who have never played, best ball, it's number one, it's extremely fun, but because it's just a draft. And, like, you can – rip out a ton of these things during the off season. I'm going to draft right now. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, no, and, I'm in one. I'm oh, saying, uh, oh, very nice. Uh, you, you do the draft, and then the computer just takes what would be your optimal lineup and plugs it in for the week, and that is your score. And because of that, you need to embrace volatility. You need to embrace variance. If you want like a, uh, a real deep dive on this, you can check out. We have an article uh, on the website was written by one of uh, some of our writers, Matt Betts, Matt DeSorbo. Uh, just the Mats. Yes, ju just the Mats. That's all who we let write. Apparently here. very good at best ball. <clears throat> but it's – and the, the essence is you need to chase the high-end outcomes at the we, – we, Jason broke down what a, what a winning roster looks up, the makeup of how many uh, position guys you should have. And the answer was you need a lot of wide receivers. We know that wide receivers – it's it's not often you have a Cooper Cup where he's just he's a locked in stud every single week. They're volatile. You have high spike weeks and you have some some games where they absolutely just disappear. Now, for an example, in best ball right now, 
Mike Williams, Deontay Johnson going very near each other. Deontay Johnson, Jason would disagree, but it, it historically has been a safer wide receiver. And But like not really giving you those huge weeks where Mike Williams, especially at the beginning of last year, was single-handedly winning weeks for people. And the fact is, because you don't have to set your roster, you don't have to be right in that weekly decision of, do I play this guy this week, do I not? Because the computer handles it, handles it all, because it is best ball. We looked, you know, we looked at a bunch of lineups. We looked, we're talking like from 2021, uh, just, just thousands and thousands of lineups and, and scores. Like I said, make sure you check out the article. But the key is volatility is good for the win rate win rates because you have the quantity of wide receivers to make up for the lack of scoring. When Jamar Chase has the week where he doesn't go for 202, he just goes for 40, five receptions and 40 yards because that happened to be a T. Higgins week. Uh, like we said, you need six minimum. We prefer that you have eight wide receivers. It really ups your chance at winning because in the best ball lineups, you're starting at least three wide receivers and a flex. So embrace that volatility. Is that that phrase is thrown out a lot of like, oh, this player is better in best ball. We say that for a reason. Because of volatility. Be, because that when they go off, they go absolute hamburglers and go right it's into like your Deshaun starting Jackson line. type exactly, of Exactly, like the, the perfect type of a guy. Yeah, a, a, every single team has their best score every single week. You know, so it, you have to have the guys who can put up monstrous scores on on the weeks that they crack your lineup so for instance I was I was doing an underdog draft right now and I had the decision between Mike Evans and Keenan Allen it was no decision for yeah, me you go, Mike, Mike Evans, Evans yeah. had six top six performances last year he's going to have big monstrous outbursts on, on my roster all right, that was best ball breakdown presented by underdog fantasy start playing on underdog today right now They'll match your first deposit up to $100 if you use the code BALLERS. All right, that is uh, going to do it for today's show. I do have one mailbag question. Can I throw this out there? Sure. Mailbag. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, a, it's a quick one. But I, I did think it was very interesting. Um, Connor in Atlanta wrote in and, and asked this question because I just finished a Dynasty startup. <laughs> and he said, what do you do when you finish a dynasty startup draft and you hate your roster? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, because that's you get one draft, right? Yeah. And and look, drafts, I mean, look, if a redraft can get away from you, then a startup dynasty can get away from you. You can start chasing positions. You can uh, panic pick. You don't want to look stupid. I mean, lots of things happen in a, in a redraft There's or a in a, a dynasty draft. There is a real answer here, an actual good piece of advice which is when you finish a dynasty startup and you look at your roster and you hate it, what you need to do is absolutely nothing. I agree. You need to wait. You need to let time play out. There was a reason you drafted each of those players when you drafted them, and there are plenty of times that I have loved a pick and it turned out bad and hated a pick and it turned out great. You have to see how this plays out. If you are already on tilt from the roster you constructed, when you go and try to fix it again, uh, you're going to make a bad you're gonna decision. You're going to tilt trade. Absolutely. So Which I would is a piece of advice in and of itself because when somebody else in your league is in that state <laughs> of mind, go get them. They're <laughs> going to tilt trade. <laughs> so go I mean I've seen it recently in this in this past dynasty startup. Somebody leaves saying, "Oh, I don't think I like my team." And then people start circling. Go and knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry you feel that way though. That is not great to get through the draft. No. Um, but I think you guys the advice is is the right advice. Also start a new one. Go go <laughs> oh, go join God. another, you know, shotgun approaches, sucker. All right, that'll do it for today's show. The ultimate draft kit available right now. Ultimatedraftkit.com. Look how easy we made it. You just go there. That is correct. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.